Hello, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. My name is Mr. B, and we are in the Lincoln Center pop-up classroom. Welcome. Happy Tuesday. Happy Friday, Junior's grandson. Isn't that precious? <laughs> That's what I was thinking about. It was Friday, yes. Anyway, happy whatever day you celebrate today. Uh, it is going to be a theater workshop, and we're going to be focusing on staging uh, and rehearsing the scenes that we wrote last time, our original scene. This is really exciting. Uh, if you weren't with us last time, fear not. I brought copies for everyone. And if you wrote your own scene last time, excellent. I hope you have it with you because you can work alongside me with yours. We are once again going to share some ideas back and forth over the internet. It's craziness. Speaking of craziness, here's what I need my adult friends to do in the room. My adults, I'd like you to hop on the keys because I'm going to ask some questions of you and your artists in residence your little learners. So maybe you could pass on my questions, they could answer, you could share. And uh, we're once again going to collaborate on this, uh, this work today. So again, we're going to be staging our original scene, which if you were here, you know takes place at the Atlanta airport with a sea captain, a kindergarten teacher, and a, a giant crab sighting, as scenes tend to do. All right, uh, let's get cooking. Let's get down to business. Let's get serious now. Uh, my adults in the room, I have a question for you to ask yourselves and your artists in residence, your little learners. Um, thinking like an actor, what kind of voice should a sea captain have? How should a kindergarten teacher stand? Oh, okay, let's break it down like this. My friend Curtis, could you please bring up our uh, question to kick us off for today? Our beginning question? Beautiful, thank you. So here's what I'm wondering, my adults in the room. You can pop these in the comments based on their first line. So this is the first thing these characters say in the scene. What kind of voice do you think these characters should have? So just some words that might describe their voice. Uh, how might you describe their personalities? And how do you think they might stand or move? So you're thinking like an actor now, because the actor looks at the text. They look at that text and they think, what does that voice sound like? So the sea captain, his first line is R. I hate the airport. Man was meant for the sea, not the sky. Make me stand here and wait for my luggage on this whirly gig. Now, you and I both know the, the whirly gig in question is the conveyor belt, where the suitcases go around. He refers to that as the whirly gig. And then the kindergarten teacher's first line is, oh, dear, excuse me, so sorry, pardon me, sir. Nope, nope, sir, <laughs> question mark, sir. So uh, based on those lines, what do you think? What are some ways that I might try doing the sea captain's voice? How should the sea captain stand? What kind of personality do you think he has? And same for the kindergarten teacher. What kind of voice should he have? How should he stand? And we're going to talk a little bit about what they should wear. But let's start there. Give me some ideas. I'm going to set up my comments while my adults in the room, if you're just joining us, hoy, welcome Tuesday. Uh, you are helping me out develop a character uh, based on these lines. All right. So I'm going to set up my comments, my adults in the room. You are going to ask your artist in residence. Ah, there we go. Perfection. All right. Comments are up and running. Let's talk logistics. Logistics, let's talk schedule. So no, this is what we're gonna do today. Um, so first of all, we're gonna do our warm up, like we do. And then we're gonna talk a little bit about stage directions because I need you to think like a director just for a minute. That's right. And if a director wants Mr. B to cross over there and to act this way or feel this way and then move over here, you gotta know a little bit of the lingo. So we're gonna do a real, real brief uh, stage directions exercise, which will be kind of fun. And we're just going to cover up, down, left, right, which I know we can handle. Insider Scoop, the incredible, wonderful Ms. Mixie is going to do a little bit deeper dive about stage directions coming up. So you're going to get like a real, like, serious actor. You're going to get to really know that. But we're just going to talk about the basics so you can help me today. Up, down, left, right. Uh, and then we are going to talk about in our rehearsal process, um, well, make some choices for these characters. I've got some costume ideas. I'm gonna want your opinion. I'm gonna give you option A and option B, and hopefully my adults and little learners, they'll weigh in and say, we want this, we want this, and then we'll try it. And then by the time we're done, you are gonna have a full scene of your own that you wrote or this one that you helped me with that you can take away and perform all by yourself. That's right. One actor or actress, two characters. Oh, magic, the magic of theater. All right. Um, hello, Navina. Nice to see you. All right, my comments are running through. 
Wunderbar, wunderbar. So you're giving me some ideas. What are some uh, vocal types, qualities, things that we might describe the sea captain uh, and the kindergarten teacher? Just some ideas. What do you think their voices might sound like? Huh, who knows? That's the joy of rehearsal and discovering and doing the odds. Speaking of joy, <laughs> last time we were together, I said to you, I'm gonna write my scene, you're gonna help me, and I hope you write a scene too. And if you do, adults, go ahead, hashtag and send it. And gosh darn it, some of you did. Some of you sent me a scene that you wrote with two characters in a place and a problem. <sighs> Tickled pink. Can't even tell you. I loved it so much. And like I said, I wanted to, I grabbed one at random, just grabbed one at random. They were so good. And I thought, I want to read this one out like I promised I would. Uh, so this is a scene from Libby in Illinois. She's hashtag hash brown this scene to me. Uh, that's about a comedian and a zoo chef like you do. So if it's all right, it's very short. Libby, if you don't mind, I thought maybe I could read your scene because it's so funny. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> so, The Comedian and the Zoo Chef by Libby in Illinois. A zoo chef is making a gourmet meal for the lions. She stands next to the cage humming softly, so I can do some pantomime. <laughs> the comedian enters and comes up to her. So then the comedian, ready? <laughs> just got done talking to the lions and he is a lion if he says he's gonna eat that the chef is unamused <laughs> right there in the script <laughs> the chef is unamused <laughs> you haven't been working here as long as i have what do you know about feeding animals jeez you must really have a chip on your shoulder hey, let, let us take a beat and start over <laughs> what orange you glad i'm here what's the matter she talking too much? Unamused. <laughs> Suddenly, three geese out of nowhere come down and attack the chef and steal all the food. Ah, you, you just stood there. I was getting attacked. Okay, fine. Now you're the chef. I don't want to make that same meal again. It takes a long time. First, you have to prepare the chicken. Please, please. I'm a failing comedian. I have to make food for myself. It's not like I've got a butler. <laughs> The chef thinks this is a little bit funny, but tries not to laugh. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, just just get to work. Uh, what should I make for the uh, the hyenas? Uh, doesn't matter as long as it's got the funny bone. <laughs> wow, that was bad. I quit. And scene <laughs> a plus to my friend Libby from Illinois. Thank you for that scene. I never would have thought to put a comedian and a zoo chef together. Brilliant team. I applaud you. Thank you very much. And also, so you know, folks, hashtag Lincoln Center at Home, send your work. I love to see it. I love to read it. Okay. Huh. Let us get to our, oh, the sea captain is mean. Pamela thinks the sea captain is mean. I'm going to start taking some notes. Oh, mean sea captain. Good, Pamela. Brr, I like that. Oh, that voice comes out. Oh, and the kindergarten teacher, really nice. That's really smart, too, because in a scene, especially a comedy, if you have opposites, that's usually where some magic happens. So I'm going to put really nice and really mean for my friend Pamela. Thank you for those suggestions. Also thinking about their voices. All right, let's do this. How about we do ourselves a little warm up? Because actors, just like athletes, we got to get things going. Got to get our emotions, bodies, faces all warmed up. So, my adults in the room, I encourage you to stand up and join in. Get your calories for your Tuesday. Cha-cha. Uh, first thing we want to do is find a bubble. And that means you can extend your arms out and go like this and not touch anything. Mr. B is too tall. He does a half bubble. And now I just know that I can move and not knock anything over. Let's say where you're standing right now, that is center stage. Where do you belong? Where's your star? So we are center stage right now. And why don't we go ahead and do our, let's do our May March. What is that? It's we just march in place because it's May. It's the May March. My friend Curtis, maybe we can we can release our questions for a minute. Maybe get a little jam going. And my seated friends, you can do the May move. A little wiggle. Nice. All right. So we're doing our May March. Now, we know as actors that just using our face and body, we can show who we are, how we're feeling, where we're going, right? So what about this? Pamela, a really mean person. How do they do a May March? I was really mean. Oh, I already get a little scowl. Mm, that's my mean face. And I kind of lean forward. Mm. 
Don, who wants to fight you? Mm. <laughs> that would be my meaning face. Mm. I'm going to start some trouble today. <laughs> good, good. And we're back to our regular main march. Well, let's, let's, let's do this. Let's talk a little bit about stage directions really quick. Because when you're on stage being an actor, your director might say, I need you to come closer to the audience. I'm not going to say it like that. The director, they'll say, can you please move down stage? Huh? Downstairs. Oh, that old chestnut. No, Mr. B, don't pretend the stairs are there. Downstairs means closer to the audience. Yes. So, can you please walk or march or put your hands out downstage? And then I come closer to the audience and you come closer to me. We're down in their faces. Hey, audience. And we go back to center stage. Nice, nice, nice. And now upstage. Well, that's downstage. Upstage is away from the audience. We can think of it like uh, up, up and away from the audience. So could you please move upstage um, like you're afraid because there's flying dinosaurs? <laughs> oh, good. And back to center stage. And downstage like you are very mad. Please cross downstage like you are angry. My ham sandwich. And back to center stage. Okay, I'm gonna let you have it this time. And maybe upstage, like you can't believe this exciting surprise party is for you. Holy cow, an elephant for my birthday. You guys are the best. Good, good, good. <laughs> All right, excellent, good. Well, those are the two basics, upstage, downstage. Downstage, down towards the audience. Upstage, up, up, and away from the audience. Stage like the stage, right? We only know what you're going to cover. A little trickier. Why is that? Because we have the opposite left and right. But my stage left is different than your stage left. No, no, no. I take that back. Too confusing. Cameo. Mr. Layer Up and could you please turn around? Did you read a mullet? <laughs> Did you know Mr. Larry Up and has a mullet? All right, so now you and Larry Ruffin Tumble are both facing me. So if I ask you and Mr. Larry Ruffin Dumble, could you please go stage left? Could you walk, march to the left, stage left? You would go to your left. So you would go march that way. Nice. So you're over there. And then you would march back stage center. And if you went stage right, <laughs> and then back to stage center. <laughs> Perfect. So just remember, left and right is always the actor's left and right, and not the director. Which we are now going to segue into. Thank you, Cardis, for that music. I am now refreshed and awake and alive. We're going to very carefully pivot down from the top of the desk into the desk to talk about being a director for a moment. Here's the scoop. If you're so lucky to have a little brother, sister, mom, dad, aunt, uncle, grandma, grandpa, best friend, whoever may be living uh, with you, around you that you can uh, hang out with and play with, and they wanna do a scene, that's awesome. Nothing more fun than just putting on a play with a buddy or somebody from your family. But if you don't have that, that's okay too. And what we're going to talk about today is how you, by yourself, could put on a scene being two different characters, just one amazing actor. Whew, whew, very exciting. All right, here we go. We're pivoting. Oh, how'd I do? Oh, I think I did good. Okay. Oh, that was very loud though. <laughs> hey, I feel very high up now. On the show, but if you do have other people that you could even direct in a scene, we have to think a little bit about the language, like I said. Uh, if you want someone to go over there, left, stage left, stage right, upstage, downstage. And real quick, I thought we'd do a quick little fun little game. <laughs> I did not have this professionally made, I know. It's shocking. I made this myself. I'm very pleased with it. Uh, and this is our stage. And today's the day of cameos. We have Larry Rough and Tumble. And now we have the beautiful... Kyoko is going to be an audience member. And then we have also all of the amazing Chihuahua. If you recall, these are from the set design workshop. If you haven't seen them, you can go watch the set design workshop. Uh, and this is called a get. In show business, when you get a big actress and you can't believe that they came to do your show, that's a get. Well, at least it was in the 50s. And today we have a get. We have the finest cork actress, the entire cork community, Corkamnestra of the Greeks. I can't believe we got her, guys. She's here today. All right. Corkum next. Corkum Nestle is going to be our star today. I'm going to pivot and show you 
what I'm talking about. All right, so as you can see, Kyoko and all of the amazing Chihuahua are in our audience, and we have Kokomnestra the Great, center stage. Now you're in the director's chair, you're out there. Where are you? There you are. If I wanted Corcumnestra to cross downstage right, what color star would she go to? Red, blue, green, purple? Well, downstage, we know down, down, down towards the audience. Good, Corcumnestra. And then when I say downstage right, so to the right, purple or green, it is Purple, did you do purple? You did? Oh, excellent, good work. So it's always the actor's right or the actress's right. So Corcum Nestra goes downstage right. Good, back to the center stage where she belongs. And if I to ask Corcum Nestra to go upstage left, where would you send her? What color star? Red, blue, green, purple? Well, let's think upstage means up, up and away from the audience and upstage left. So we wanna go to blue, all right. Did you get it? This is one of the more confusing things about stage directions is because you're looking at it from your perspective. So remember, it's not your right and left, it's the actor's right and left. But I think you did pretty good on that one. Practice, when you're in the kitchen, be like, excuse me, mom, could you please cross stage right and grab your orange juice and exit stage left out of the kitchen <laughs> and see, see if anyone pays attention. <laughs> Probably not, but still you can practice your director lingo. <laughs> All right, put my friends away. We're gonna come back to that in a moment because I'm gonna ask you for some ideas from me. So when I'm staging my scene, where should I enter? Upstage left, upstage right, downstage right, stage center? We will find out. All right, let us. A chicken, I just, something just popped up in my comments and said a chicken, and I didn't have much else context around it. <laughs> a chicken. Oh, the kindergarten teacher hems and haws. That's a really interesting, I'm gonna put on my post-it. Hems and haws, that's an interesting character type. Um, so here's what we're gonna do. If you're working on your own scene, a plus, awesome. Go ahead and start doing the process, thinking about what those characters' voices sound like. Uh, and uh, if you're working with me, let's go ahead and pull up the first page of our scene. I was gonna say script, but it's really a scene. So Curtis, can we go ahead and pull up the first page of our scene that we wrote together? And let us take a look-see at this. All right, so the sea captain is a little out of touch with the airport routine. <laughs> I think that's probably very true. His voice should be a combination of authoritative and confused. Wow, confused and authoritative. Oh, wow, that's a great note. I love that for a character. A nice chicken. I just think that's so funny. Wow, a, oh, a new character, a chicken. I've already got, okay, I've got a giant crab making a cameo. So maybe a chicken will also have to appear somewhere. Maybe a sweet voice. Oh, good, 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 good. Okay. Oh, rough. Okay, I like that. So here's what I want to do. Let's, so let's look at this first line together. Now, the sea captain, I want you to go ahead and try this out too. We both have the same script here. Thinking about what the sea captain's voice might sound like. And for me, when I think sea captain, I immediately think, Arr. <laughs> I am I'm so deep as an actor. All I think about is, Arr, and I have to squint one eye. So when I think of a sea captain, I think of a rough voice. Um, but I'm going to take this note about maybe confused and authoritative, like, oh, uh, oh yeah, exactly. I'm a B6, sir. I hate this. I uh, hate the airport. Man was meant for the sea, not the sky. <laughs> Make me stand here and wait for his luggage on this whirly gig. Oh, and then he sees a suitcase, right? And goes, oh, oh, this looks like a pretty one. So shiny. <laughs> and he goes to grab it. So that may be one way that I play around with the voice. I'm curious if anybody else has any ideas. It doesn't have to be rough and gravelly. I don't know. I guess it could be It could be smooth. It doesn't have to be like a gravelly one. Like, uh, how would that sound like? Oh, I hate the airport. Man was meant for the sea, not the sky. Make me stand here, wait for my luggage on this whirly gig. Ooh, hmm, so that's another way I could do it too. I kind of, for me, I don't know, I really, I, I make myself laugh when I do my arr and squinty eyes. So I think that is maybe how I would use my voice. Um, oh, this is so funny. 
we are getting some comments in the comment room. <laughs> I love it. I have all these extra ideas for, so maybe for your scene, you're adding some extra characters. I love it. All right. Um, so then I got this idea for Mr. Uh, the kindergarten teacher is Mr. Roberts. And they might be very sweet. So maybe it's my voice is a little bit more of my own natural voice. So when I do one character, it's very clear who I am because I'm down here and I've got a squinty eye. And then when I do the other character, it's maybe a little bit of me. Um, maybe maybe he's a little fidgety, like they said. Maybe he's, um, hi, my name is, uh, oh gosh, uh, my name is Mr. Roberts. I'm a kindergarten teacher at uh, Little Leaf Academy, and it's great to be here today. <laughs> so maybe that's kind of, I use my own voice, but I raise it a little bit higher. I don't know. I'm going to play around with that. So let me go ahead and do this voice. I'm going to do this first two lines because I know as an actor performing by myself, and if you're performing by yourself, you got to really think about how you can distinguish, show the two different characters. So it has to be really clear. So for me, I know I can look here and do my, all right, the airport. Man was meant for the sea, not the sky. You make me stand here. Wait for my love, John, this world again. Oh, this looks like a pretty one. So shiny. Oh, uh, I, oh, excuse me, I'm so sorry. Um, I'm so sorry, pardon me, um, uh, sir. <laughs> great, so maybe that's how I would start my scene, using those voices. So if you've got the same voice, great, but go ahead and play around with it. But how could it be very clear that you're doing both characters? Uh, you're the same actor playing two different people. Now, another thing we might try, now I need you to think a little bit like a costume designer, a little costume design idea, because I could also use a piece to show who they are. And it could be something quick that I take on and off. So here's what I was thinking. Maybe you have an, uh, an idea what a costume piece could be like. So I was thinking like a captain's hat. So I actually have a captain's hat. Why? I don't know. I have fake teeth. I've got rubber teeth in this house and captain's hats and scarves. Arr, I don't know why. So this is one option I could do for my captain, hmm, right? So let me know if you like that. Uh, I could also use an eye patch. I could just hold up an eye patch like that Arr, <laughs> if I wanted to be really quick about it. So maybe like an eye patch or a scarf. Hmm. Oh, it's got skulls and crossbones on it. Oh, all right. So those are three choices that I might use for my captain. So let me know. What do you think? I wonder what we could add for the captain. Uh, and then for the kindergarten teacher, I've got a newsies hat maybe. Hey, everybody. Uh, first day. Little Leaf Academy, I'm really excited to be here. Uh, yeah, I thought we'd take snowflakes. I know it's the first day of school, I'm so nervous. We don't do snowflakes in July, ah. or whatever it may be. Uh, so I could do a hat for Mr. Roberts, the kindergarten teacher, or I thought about a tie. Now the problem with a tie is that I can't really tie it and untie it and tie it and untie it. So, because I think like this sometimes, I tied it to a shoehorn. So I could do this. So if I wanted to, I could be Mr. Roberts, when I've got my kindergarten teacher tie on, and then it can go away, and then come back up when I need it, and go away. So those are my options. Newsies hat, or a tie, or if you have another idea, maybe you're thinking, well, when I do this scene, I know I've got these pieces, and I could do those. So, oh, we've got, we've got a, a hat. So we definitely, we like the hat. Cool, all right. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna kind of stand up, and I'm gonna play with going back and forth really fast. I want you to do the same to see if you've got a costume piece or if you have an idea, how could you go back and forth and do the characters and still tell the story? So you can't pause, take a break, have a snack, and then say the next line. It's gotta be really fast. All right, so let us go back to our acting studio. Ooh, we're so high now. There we go. Is that good? Oh, Mr. B. <laughs> All right. So let me start out with this. I wonder, let me try, if I use my tie. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Mr. Roberts. Yeah, I like that. I think that that <clears throat> feels like a very nice kindergarten teacher tie. Very good. And then maybe I'll do the captain's hat. And we'll just see. I'm just going to kind of see. I'm going to go back and forth and just see how those work. Again, I hope you try the same. See what it's like to say one line and then the other line. You can look one way and then look the other way. You could try a hat on or off. So let's see. All right. So <clears throat> let's, we'll jump ahead a little bit. Um, we'll so we're gonna start from Mr. Roberts. I believe you have my bag. All right. So here we go. Um, <clears throat> uh, uh, sorry. I, uh, I, I believe you have my bag. <laughs> what? Nonsense, Scallywag. Look right here at the tag. Mm. Oh, it's so tiny. 
See, Roberts. Ah, that's me, uh, Captain Roberts. Hi. Oh gosh, um, <laughs> this is really embarrassing. My name, um, <clears throat> my name is Carl Roberts, uh, Captain Roberts. I'm a kindergarten teacher at Little Leaf Academy, and that, that's my back. Look, a giant crab. <clears throat> um, may I please have my bag? <laughs> I took a note from Libby's script. Unamused, do not fall for the giant crab joke. <laughs> so thank you, Libby, for that little stage direction. I just stole that from you. Anyway, um, uh, I don't want to have to get security. So this is something I might play around with. So the hat and the tie feel like it's a good combo for me. I can do it pretty quick. Um, but if you wanted to play around with a scarf, maybe, when you do this. Oh, because believe me, you. I'm going to get to the end of the scene, and you're going to get a chance to print it up and perform it. So I want you to think about these characters. So I could do the scarf for the captain, maybe, and then the tie for Mr. Roberts. So I can play around with that. Um, all right, let's move on. Before, oh, before we move on, I want you to give me some advice, first of all, uh, before we go on to page two. Should I come from upstage right or left at the beginning of this? If I'm the captain, so my adults ask your little learners, my scene could start back here, upstage right. And I could come in center, and I could come, I could come right down in here. <laughs> Arr, I hate the airport. Man was meant for this guy. So I could start upstage right and come center. Or I could start upstage left and go downstage right. So what do you think? Where should I start my scene? <laughs> I could come from down here. Arr, I hate the airport. <laughs> I could just come from the floor. <laughs> so go ahead, weigh in, tell me, what do you think? Where should my, my entry come from? Upstage right? Upstage left, maybe? Or just stage center? So go ahead, my directors. You have it. Oh, ties. All right. Tie, we say yes. The tie trick, I'm glad you enjoy that. Okay, so you're going to tell me where I should enter and exit. Let's look at our second page, just a couple lines. Uh, and I want you to now think about this. This is what's happening. If my friend Curtis could pull up our second page of text. Um, because now um, they're going to open the suitcase, right? He says, all right, it's mine. He says, no, it's mine. I'll show you when he opens it. And then there are some treasures in there. And I'm curious, what does your imagination say? If you were going to be a playwright, which you are, what would be in a kindergarten uh, teacher's suitcase that a sea captain would go, Oh, I want that so bad. Oh, look at that. I want that so bad. It looks like so much fun. Now, in my imagination, the first thing I thought was Play-Doh, which, of course, he would think is a salty snack, and he eats it. He goes, ah, that's too salty. But he doesn't know what it is. And then uh, crayons, maybe like uh, waxy, waxy uh, candles to help me at night when I'm at sea. So those are my two ideas. And I'm curious if maybe you have one more idea. I left a blank space on the script there, as you can see, because I'm hoping you can give me another idea for a toy or something really fun that, uh, that a sea captain might find in a kindergarten teacher's bag and just be like, oh, that's the best. <laughs> it just tickles me. Oh, crack, crack, crack me up. All right. Uh, anyway, so let me see if my... All right, so we have a suggestion to come from the back. I, I think that's a good idea. I kind of like that. And if I'm filming it, I can maybe get, I can start from upstage and come downstage and get right in the camera, right in the face of my audience, to show what a wonderful sea captain I am. Entering from upstage center makes sense to me. Look at that. We're on the same page. Excellent. So I really like that. So in my script, I might write, I want to enter from upstage center. Cool. All right. So here's uh, so here's what I'm going to do now. I want to get, so let's just try the second page. I'm going to play with it and you go ahead and do the same. And then we'll kind of talk about what happens next. All right. So I think I'm going to keep using my kindergarten or my sea captain hat. You're giving me a line about what you might find in a suitcase. Got my Mr. Roberts tie. All right. So they open the bag and the sea captain says, holy treasures. Um, I'm sorry. Excuse me. What did you say? Arr, uh, it's my pleasure to show you what I have in my bag. Uh, there, that's, um, let's see. Uh, let's see you know, yeah. mm, oh, yes, my uh, my favorite salty snack. I like to bring with me on the plane. And uh, and this here, these, oh, these colored wax candles. When I'm on the stormy sea at night and get scared. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, you just ate Play-Doh. And, um... And those were crayons, weren't they? 
Yes, uh, yes, they were. <laughs> Arr, I'm old. I don't see so well. My apologies. All right, take your take your bag. Oh, and he starts to cry. <laughs> so what happens next? I don't know. You're going to have to go and get the script yourself and see if you can finish it. I had some ideas how that scene might end, but I would really like you to go print it up and see if you can act this out. Again, if you're by yourself, you can do it this way. You can you have a little prop. Just make sure your voice and body are very clear. If you've got a friend or someone else or two other people that you can direct, all the better. But if you want the rest of the script, you can go to hashtag Lincoln Center at home. Give me like 20 minutes because I want to add some ideas that I'm getting about this. Uh, what's in the suitcase. So let's say around three o'clock today. I'm going to put that scene up so you can go ahead and print it. I want to incorporate some of these flashcards. That's so funny. A pen. <laughs> There's instant comedy in an, an ink pen, is there not? Oh, oil! Oh, oh, it's ink! It's ink! It's a squid! Ah, I can't get it! Or whatever it may be. And flashcards. That's very funny, too. I want to think about that. <laughs> anyway, uh, so again, if you want to print up this uh, scene, it'll be available in a little bit. I'll incorporate some of your ideas, and I hope you play around with it. It's really fun. Little costume pieces, little voices, whatever it may be. All right, my dear friends, thank you so much. You've made my Tuesday 100% better. I had such a good time. I hope you did too. My adults in the room, if you think somebody might enjoy this workshop, feel free to share. Go ahead and send it on their way. And if you're not catching this live, no worries. All of our pop-up classrooms are on the Facebook, uh, Facebook, Facebook? Lincoln Center Facebook page, and you can always watch them. Uh, so we've got all sorts of fun stuff. We hope you check it out. With that being said, I'm going to go and... Finish up with me Play-Doh and say goodbye, my friends. Arr, it's so good to see you. Have a great rest of your week. Don't forget tomorrow, 2 p.m. Make sure you're here. All right, everybody. Good to see you. Happy Tuesday. Mm -hmm. oh, it's pretty tasty. It's a little on the salty side. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's a, there's a little Lego in it. A little crunchy center. Isn't that nice? I feel like I'm getting a little Irish. All right, everybody. Thank you. Curtis, my friend, please take me out with some gentle, sweet tunes from Mr. Damien. And uh, I will see you all at the next Lincoln Center pop-up classroom. Bye, everybody.